Hello. Hello. Thank you Welcome. for ringing that bell. You know, there's a song by the po there's a song by the Pointer Sisters that's called "Ring My Bell." No, it doesn't ring any bell with me. Okay, then. Well, our episode today is about auras and energy. Hey, but didn't you, I mean, don't you want to give me the tune of that song on Just a Line or Just a Line so I could sing it? Okay, I'm not a singer. Okay. I'll look it up later and I'll sing it for Ring you. Ring my bell. It's like a great, it's a, it's a disco song and it's about some woman that, want a guy to ring her bell. Why don't you ring my bell? Metaphorically speaking, I'm sure. Yeah, metaphorically speaking. I'm always metaphorically speaking. No, I yeah. mean, the woman who wants to, the guy to ring her bell, metaphorically speaking, she wants, um, how do I say that? Anyway. Attention from him, attention. Yeah, because uh, women's currency, like, Men's currency is sex and women's currency is attention, right? It's same as sex, only... Attention? Not, not exactly, yes. Uh, anyway, what are we talking about? No, no, wait a minute. I'm, I'm having a moment of silence. Having a moment of silence. <laughs> I, I, mean, I don't know why did I bring that up. Uh, it's kind of happened uh, involuntarily. Okay. Okay, I'm not even going to make a comment about the word up. So recently we discussed in, I started numbering episodes again, but don't worry about that. Episode 18 was about nothing. Episode 19 was about anything. Episode 20, everything you know is wrong. Episode 21, auras and energy. So we're going to talk about auras and energy today. And I wanted to send a little greeting to um, our digital art friend and dancer, Lydia, who is in Germany, and Manuel, who is in Germany. And you know, you might think that the name Manuel is a Spanish or Latin name, but actually he's a German. Um, we also have someone who is a subscriber, Massimo de Angeles. Massimo, molto piacere Massimo. Massimo, I have known probably for about six, seven years. He is originally from Rome, and he is a jazz composer and a, a, a published or, you know, a real, real musician. And I think he's now living in the city of brotherly love in the United States. Do you know what that city is? Uh, Los Angeles. That's close. Okay. But it, uh, I think it's really California. Healthy. Philadelphia, okay. I meant that, yeah. I think he's in Philadelphia. And then we have uh, David in Dallas, and we have Senor Puente in Mexico. So we have quite an eclectic mix of subscribers, and we would love for new people to subscribe as well. So what do you know about energy? Do you have good energy today? Are you tired? Are you excited? Did you eat too much cake yesterday? Oh, yeah, I had a uh, awful lot of cake yesterday. I promised not to do that again ever in my life. Uh, but today I feel a little bit better. I just had a sparkling water, uh, and that uh, kind of brought me back to life. Hey, can I can I go back a little bit and ask you what Dallas is city of? Like, of, of sisterly love, or maybe... Uh, well, Dallas... Okay, well, Dallas has as one of its main features the city that shot JFK oh, no, assassination happened here and also okay. Dallas uh, main airports called Love Field but Dallas is actually known as the city of blondes Dallas is ruled by blondes we have an independent uh, beer uh, company that produces a beer that's very popular I'm not too crazy about it but it's called Dallas Blonde and Dallas is run by blondes, uh, you know, Mick Jagger of the Rolling Stones. Okay, well, you know, he... I don't know how he correlates with blondes. I mean, Mick Jagger, but uh, but okay. He's Mick Jagger. 
Mick Jagger yeah, can do anything he wants. Right. What, why are you? Why are you not liking Mick Jagger? I like him. I just I like the word you said, brotherly love. The city of brotherly love. I did not know that Philadelphia was such a city, and I thought, what if there is a city of sisterly love or parental love or any other love? Okay, well, you know, in Dallas, there is an area that's called the Gaberhood. And there's a, a circle roundabout. It has a really kind of cool statue, and it's just called the Circle of Love. So it's the it's near uh, Highland Park, which is a very moneyed, uh, incorporated city in Dallas, and the Gaberhood, where there's lots of clubs and clubs and clubs and clubs and clubs. But um, you know, I I have been to Philadelphia and. Pennsylvania is very, is exactly like, like you know the Andrew Wyeth, the uh, the painter, and Norman Rockwell. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, we've talked about those painters before. Philadelphia. I mean, Philadelphia is a city, but it's located in Pennsylvania, where like there's Quakers, there's people, beautiful land, open vistas. It was like so charming when I when I drove. When, when I drove through there some, some years ago. I, mm. I did want to mention one other thing. Well, I mean, that's, I keep saying I want to mention one other thing, and I'm, we've talked for 10 minutes. Um, some people are at different levels of technology. So some people, you know, you know, know how to load Spotify. Some people know how to subscribe to, uh, you know, YouTube. But I just wanted to like very, very briefly say, you know, open your phone, go to your settings, look at where you can load the apps. Suppose you want to load YouTube, you click on YouTube, then you choose a channel. So let's suppose you go to YouTube and you want to listen to Mark's station where he talks about trains and he shows videos of different trains. So he's a, tra a chain, a train chaser. And then you hit the subscribe button, which means you can continue to get notified about Mark's station. So let's suppose you go to settings, open the app, YouTube, you want to find Patroma therapy. You find it, click subscribe, and now you can make comments down below. And you or... pushing our subscribers too far. Excuse me? No, I mean, you're pushing our listeners too hard, I think. But Thanks maybe it's sharing... just me. It could be wrong. Thanks for sharing that idea. Remember, everything you know is wrong. Yeah, but our channel is consensual. Stop flirting with me. Okay, now. The, hey, I, no, I didn't I'm, have a chance to answer your question about my energy. Well, I didn't. Well, I'm not ready to <laughs> your answer. Okay. I'm just saying okay. a lot of people don't know. Just, a lot of people already have Spotify. And I'm just saying that if you have Spotify, go down and look for this pink, pink uh, cover shot. Click that on. Then choose an episode and subscribe. So we have different people at different levels of sophistication in terms of phones and whether or not they I, even listen to anything on their phone. Some people I, hate sorry their Sorry to phone. interrupt. Can I just, a pink cover shot sounds um, sleazy. Maybe we should change the color to Don't change anything. Like we are building a following based on what we're doing. Anytime you change anything, it's like you're doing a memory wipe, like you, you destroy. It's like going yeah, on the beach and kicking. No, no, don't do that. Okay, done. Okay, what I'm saying is like you build a sandcastle and then you're like we're building a sandcastle. I'm telling people about the sandcastle. I'm telling them where it is on the beach and then you decide to kick it over and like build a bridge out of sand. Yeah, but wouldn't, I don't want you, wouldn't you destroy something beautiful that you've just built and then build it again over and over again? Well, you're a man. Yeah. That's, how, that's how men do things. I see. Okay, let's just, let's just go back to don't change anything because... We're finally getting the channel to grow, and we're on several different you know platforms. So, so how are you today? How is your energy? You said you've had some sparkling. I, I, yeah, water. absolutely. I feel much better. 
I think my energy field is um, so high I can be uh, I can serve as a human energy source if uh, <laughs> if it's possible at all. Just make a it human energy mind. Do you remember source. that movie when every human is uh, like a battery? And um, yeah, that was awful. Can you, I can you be I more the memory wipe to get rid of it. Wait a minute. Can you be a little bit more specific? You said you remember that movie where everybody was a battery. Like, can you give me yeah, a little that more? Yeah, we are living on? in the matrix, and oh, like you said, everything you know is wrong. That nothing uh, what it seems to be. Uh, actually, you're sleeping and being used as a battery. Uh, in the same time, you are fed the pictures or memories or ideas that you think are yours. Uh, so as to you know. But in reality, you serve as a battery source. I hope I'm not that kind of battery source. What I meant was positive energy, and uh, well, good you know, I learned it. I learned a term a couple of years ago called energy vampire, and I, I've been a like a professor and like a counselor and like a therapist, and I was going to be a therapist. So I have a, a degree in psychology, but. I decided to go into the classroom and then teach writing. And then if, you know, just teach the classes. And if a couple of students want to talk to me after class about a paper they wrote, or they want to tell me that they're thinking of killing themselves, well, we just do that after class. And then I refer them to the counselor. So, so um, I was teaching a class about psychology and I had been reading about synchronicity and I was teaching a little bit about Carl Jung. So this was an introduction to psychology. And we, you know, I would write on the board the word um, coincidence, synchronicity. Then I just tell the students, okay, take out your, when I say tablet, this was, you know, like a real writing tablet because they would then turn it into my desk. And then the next day I would bring their tablets back. So this was like a real you know, pen and paper tablet. So I wrote on the board, you know, coincidence, synchronicity, which would be a prompt. I just prompt them to do some writing. And the students really liked that. These were, when I was doing that, these were seniors in high school that had already been accepted to college. And it was in the um, Northwest part of Houston. Uh, so anyhow, I, I wrote another another time something on the board like deja vu flashback and then they would just sit there and write so they were just generating the text they were not being careful about uh, punctuation or grammar or spelling and then i would just tell them on friday choose something from your journal and develop that into a paper i need at least 350 words and that's what i would grade but they would also get points on like finishing their journal so I had written on the board once energy and then I would just walk around the classroom and glance at what people were writing. And I saw this girl had these, she drew the outline of a figure and she had these pen cause I had a lot of art equipment in my room. She had gone up to get some like colored pencils and she colored around the outside. Like we talked about negative space. She colored on the outside of this, this figure you know, kind of like a sunrise, but it wasn't specifically the sun. I go, oh, that's pretty interesting. What's that? She says, oh, that's the aura. I go, really? So I was able to elicit information about auras just based on this prompt that I had put on the board. So then I, the, the next time we did that, I wrote, I, I said, let's do another one on auras and energy or something like that, you know auras, energy, and synchronicity. And then and then, then I told people to break up into their small groups, and then I would say, just talk about it. So uh, instead of me just being the sage on the stage, you know, just one person talking and lecturing, all the students just sit there, I, I was getting everybody to, like, mix and mingle and whatever. And I was talking with this one group, and they were like in this really deep conversation about deja vu. And I wandered over to another group and someone else was talking about uh, they had heard a, a voice in a dream. And sometimes they hear voices now. And I was saying, well, you know, hearing voices could be schizophrenia, but 
and I, I, cause you know, it's a classroom and these are high school students. So I have to be careful not to like, you know, do therapy in the class, but I got such great, you know, such, such great response. Didn't you mention to me the other day, something about you had sometimes felt in a dream that someone was nearby or somebody was near you in a dream. What was that? I did. I did. You, you know, I'm sometimes, sometimes I think that I could be an energy vampire and uh, I am considering myself a good person, but if I am vampire, I couldn't be good, right? So maybe, is it possible? Because I know that once you are beaten, you've become a vampire. For instance, if I feel a good and next moment I feel down because there was an energy vampire uh, next to me who siphoned off my energy, uh, would that be an energy vampire too? Because uh, like a normal vampire would be. Well, there's there's a couple different vampires. So like in in mass culture, Western culture, we have like Bram Stoker's, you know, uh, myth of, of the, you know, Dracula, you know, and, you know, Vlad, Vlad, the, you know, the Count, Count Dracula, and, you know, he lures people to his castle, and, you know, he draws people to himself. So we, ha we have the, you know, Vampire Diaries was a whole series, but if we just think about the, the uh, psychological term energy vampire, I'll just say that it's like this. I go to a patio bar and some people are talking and then all of a sudden someone's trying to really engage me like, hey, you know, I want to know what you think about that. I go, yeah, OK, that's, you know, I'm just here to like have my beer. No, you like, seem really interesting. I, I really want to talk to you. I want to tell you about this dream I had. I go, oh, okay, okay. Well, you know, now is not a good time. Then I walk over to some other place and this person follows me. So this is someone who is like sucking up my energy. That's an energy vampire. So I don't want to be exactly. around them. So I just, I just keep moving away from them. Now, I was on this back patio of this, uh, this patio bar called The Goat, and we have an episode called Strangers, and some of the characters on the back patio are on the cover shot. Hello, Angel. Uh, but this, I'm just standing there talking to a couple musicians. I'm just standing there. You know, I have like one beer in my hand. I barely even am drinking it. And suddenly this woman motions with her finger to come here. She's sitting on a bench with two other guys smoking cigarettes. She just motions. She doesn't even speak to me. She just motions to me with her finger. And I just walk 10, 15 steps. I go, hey. He goes, she goes, I've seen you before. I go, yeah, yeah, I come here. He says, no, I saw you in a past life. I said, ah, yeah, no, I'm Catholic. I'm not into that stuff. She goes, we were on a ship together. We were pirates. Now, she's not drunk, and I'm not drunk. It's like a full moon, so it's like a setting for like a, uh, you know, a movie. And it's interesting because I have two brothers, and my brothers and I have this inside joke that we're pirates because we've traveled the world, and we've, we're adventurers, and we love to do things. And it was just sort of weird that she used the word pirate. And then I just moved away from her and went back on the inside. And she came on the inside of the bar and she came up to me at this high top table. She goes, can I buy you a beer? I go, I'm good. I'm fine. She goes, I would really like to buy you a beer. I said, I would really not like for you to buy me a beer. Just, just roll off. So I was telling her, leave me alone. So was she an energy vampire? Yes. Was she trying to like suck my energy? Yes. But did she turn me into a vampire? No. Well, because you shielded yourself. Maybe unconsciously. You formed that shield. Yeah, I do. Yeah. And he, you could not be vampirized. It's true. You know, there's, and especially with the pandemic, there were people that were like, that had lost their some family members, people had lost their jobs, people had, the, all their relationships were stressed out. And I had any number of people, you know, kind of, 
like maybe calling me, asking me for advice, you know, asking me, oh, did I hear that so-and-so died? And like, I finally just had to just kind of shut some of that stuff off because I was also dealing with isolation and, and uh, you know, my, my daughters were in other, were in other cities and, and, you know, one of my, one of my sisters left San Antonio and went to El Salvador. It was like crazy. And like, there was just too much energy and information coming in to me faster than I could process it. Like you remember at the beginning of the pandemic, like touch your face. No, don't touch your face. Get a shot. No, we're all working from home. No, we're not working from home. No, you can't see your children. You, do you remember the beginning of the pandemic, the yeah. crazy energy there? Of course. I mean, if you're not crazy, you're not normal. Thanks for the insight. No, I mean, I'm, this whole idea of the energy vampire is is uh, very interesting to me because when you go to a rest, like a like a restaurant, you're mainly sitting with one or two people. You're having a meal. The waiter comes over. You know, you have your drinks. You eat. You pay. You leave. So it's not a lot of interaction. But if you go to a sports bar in the afternoon or an open patio, or if you go to a, a music place at night where everybody's mixing and mingling everybody's bringing their energy into that space so let's suppose there's a let's just say there's a a square and that's the club everybody's coming from someplace you know somebody's coming from work somebody else is coming from visiting a friend something someone's coming from like four hours of day drinking and that energy all pours into that one space and then the musicians amp it up with like electric guitars and rock and roll and they might have saxophones and someone's got a drummer and just the energy is amplified when you go into this place and it's not even a sleazy place it's like a respectable dive bar and when you go to work everybody's come, let's suppose your work is uh on the fourth floor of a tall building Everybody who comes into work has come from someplace. Maybe they came from home. Maybe they came from someone else's house. Maybe they came from the subway. Maybe they drove their car. And then you go to your desk to do your work. And have you ever noticed on some days your your boss or your colleagues are like just in an awful mood? You know, some people give off very strong vibrations. You seem like... Um... 300 yards away from you, but you know who they are and how they feel. Speaking of which, while we're on it, maybe that is called human aura. I don't know. Do you know what aura is? Is that how it's yeah. spelled? A-U-R-A. So it's on our, it's on our cover shot, and, and the cover shot shows uh, a woman just kind of rushing along on the street, and her hair is flowing behind her. It's kind of blurred, blurred out. But, an, well, I mean... We are not solid, you know, we are, we're like molecules moving. And so like the desk is molecules moving at a s slower speed and boiling water is mo molecules moving at a higher speed and steam is a higher speed. And so, you know, if we, if we actually stop and realize that, that we're just molecules, we're just molecular, you know, when I give a little lecture about that, like the students just left the classroom, like with their mouth open, like just like astonished. Or like, or like when you when you find out you see a star, you don't ever really see the star. You see the space that used to be the star because it takes how many thousand years for the light to reach your eye. That star is already burned out. But yeah, the aura is the energy field around a conscious being. That's my idea. An aura yeah. is an energy field around a conscious being. So I don't think a rock has an aura. It's got a vibration, but it doesn't have an aura. I know what you mean, but sometimes, as I said, people like, who a few hundred yards from you are giving you an exact idea who they are, what they're doing. And I thought maybe that's not the aura, maybe like their body language. Somehow you're picking it up oh, unconsciously yeah. and translate it into ideas about them. They're like alcoholics. You see the dark, drunk man like far, far away, you know he's, even if he's standing straight. Uh, it's not his aura. It's something about his body language or maybe, maybe. It's, no, no, it's, it's all that because like uh, guys always have like the bloated belly 
and like you know i mean there's just there's a lot of clues to who a person is and and uh a, a week or so ago i went into this bar and i'm always very i mean i don't have so much time like we all have just 24 hours a day so i i like to be careful about how i spend my time and i walked in and i was really drawn to this one high top is just a tall table i was drawn to this one high top and this these two three people were there just like laughing and smiling and they're just like energy was like so great and i just walked in and i had my i know i think i had my statue of liberty hat that david had brought back from new york city and um I just kind of leaned into this table. I go, you guys look like so much fun. Can I join you? They go, oh my God, Lady Liberty is here. And they had such beautiful smiles. And in a few more episodes, we're gonna, we're gonna see these people, uh, Amos and Austin and MJ and Clark. So I was just drawn to their high energy and they were smiling and they were laughing. And you know, it was about midnight They'd been drinking a little bit, but they weren't like, you know, blasted drunk in the corner or like some guy, like you say, you see him across the room and like he he's just there to drink. He's not talking to anyone. He's been drinking for hours. But uh, yeah, I mean, I could kind of tell by their body language, but like Amos was wearing this little white shirt, a little cotton shirt with some pinstripes on it and and then uh, Austin was wearing a black shirt with like, like um, I think it was like mm-hmm. white triangles. Like I was very attracted to the colors they were wearing. Mm-hmm. And this one guy's name was Clark. I kept thinking Clark Kent. You know, maybe he's Superman. You meet so many people. Uh, I've lost count. I, there is some, someone new every day. Uh, we just wait to go, right? Well, you know, um, I was gone for two, three weeks to Portland, so I wasn't around. And then I used to travel all the time, go up to Brooklyn, and I'm not around. Or I go to some church functions, I'm not around. So then when I return, people are like, oh my God, you're back. Where have you been? Can I buy you a beer? It's like, okay. <laughs> so it seems like I'm really interesting, but I'm really not. I just, I just move around. <laughs> <laughs> you you said that you're very careful about spending your time. Can you give me any tips so that maybe about how I could spend my time meaningfully? Well, there's things you must do. I hate them. Must. There's things you want to do. I like that. So, must do. You have to put gas in your car to get home. You have to have your card or whatever you use to get on the subway to get home. Okay, I have to take, I must take the trash out. So those are non, non-negotiable. If the but trash can is anybody gonna, else do that for me. Yeah, that they're called maids. <laughs> I'd love to have one. Or a valet, get someone to like, yeah. No, I like but, so like one. Okay, I got it. <laughs> so, so there's M and W, must do and want to do. So, mm-hmm. must do, I suddenly got a call the other night. I got a, a vibe, an energy vibe to call my brother who lives in San Antonio. And I thought, oh, I'll call him later. I'm going to go up to this music place tonight because I'm maybe going to sell some jewelry. And someone so wanted to look at a painting. So I had a painting in the trunk, a couple paintings in the trunk of my car. So must do and want to do. Okay, I wanted to go out and sell a few things and I could either go Friday night or Saturday night. So I was getting ready to go and I got this vibe, call your brother. I kept telling myself, yeah, call him tomorrow. I'm, I'm getting ready to go out. And then I got this stronger vibe, call your brother. So I just texted my brother. It's about like 10 o'clock at night, 9.30. I go, hey, how you doing? You want to chit chat for about 10 minutes? He immediately texts back, I'm so glad you texted me. I'm in the emergency room. Okay, so suddenly I must talk to my brother, right? I wanted to go to this music dance place, but suddenly my time was 
moved over to Mus. So I talked to my brother. I didn't go out that night. I slept really well. I think the next morning, maybe you and I recorded an episode. So there's things you want to do. Like you want to go buy some vodka and tomato juice and make Bloody Marys. Will that bring you joy? Then go do it. So I, another component is that something must bring you joy. Yeah, absolutely. So, it could be new language or a new episode we're making, new conversation with you, right? Anything new. Yes. Could even just yes. be new information. Yes. And, Somehow and I so, feel when we're talking, I feel better than when we're not. <laughs> so, so we're always talking. But, you know, we, we like to talk. I like to talk. I like to hear people's stories. I mean, this one fellow, Austin, we just started talking. And I said, like, you're, you're, you're such an interesting young man. I said, now pace yourself because life is a lot longer than you think it's going to be. He goes, yeah, you're, you're a really amazing, amazing lady. And I go, yeah. I go, well, tell me something you're interested in. He goes, well, you know, I'm actually interested in saints. I go, oh, my gosh, really? And remember, everybody else at the bar is like loaded and drinking and dancing and like doing shots. And so I go, what was your name again? He goes, Austin. I go, yeah, like UT, like that's where I went to school. I said, you know, I have some favorite saints like Joan of Arc and, and I like St. Patrick and I love St. Martin de Porres. He goes, oh, my God, that's my saint, St. Martin de Porres. And the guy that was with him at the bar, his name is Amos, he just leaned over and he goes, isn't he amazing? He's just such a charming fellow. I go, he really is. And so all of a sudden I was having this like real conversation with the person that I wasn't really expecting to have. And I don't know how it happened. Was it synchronicity? You know, was I in the matrix? Uh, you know, I, I wasn't. It, it was just so interesting. And it, when I left that evening, I exchanged uh, Instagram accounts with, with these guys. And we said, oh, let's go do brunch some morning. We can, we can talk some more and visit some more. They go, yes. I go, okay, I'll, bu I'll buy the drinks and you buy the, the entrees. I go, oh, no, 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 let me change that. I'll buy the entrees. You guys buy the drinks because you all look like you, can know how to, you know how to drink. So it was just a serendipitous moment of just like falling into these people. Now, did we talk? Did we drink? Did we buy shots? Yes. But were they energy vampires? No. They didn't take from me, from my energy. They, they brought me joy. They bought me <laughs> tequila shots. I bought a tequila shot for them. One guy wanted a Jameson. But, you know, you're saying like how, how can you figure out what to do with your time? Well, there's some things you must do. Like, tell me one thing you must do today. Uh, take care of myself. Would For a specific, fine? yeah, okay. like, uh, like hike. You must get a haircut, or you or must go ride bike. a bike. Anything that yeah. uh, involves some kind of activity or being out. That's something you must do, or that's something you want to do. Both? No, it's not. Would that be a little bit okay. of both? Okay, if I must do something like absolutely necessary, that would be... Yeah, must is absolute. Uh, uh, mm, uh, uh, clean my room, right? Or or kitchen or God forbid bathroom that I must okay. do. Okay, so you must... You must clean clean the bathroom. You must wash some dishes. You must... You must get home, right? You must get home. You know, you can put gas in your car or whatever. Now, what do you be... want to do? You'd like to ride a bike. So that's under right. want. Mm -hmm. So I don't keep a chart, but this was something I developed with uh, one of my daughters when she was in medical school. She drew a big circle and then she spliced up 24 hours. And then she colored in with uh, pen pencils, colored pencils. She has to be in class listening to lectures on anatomy or veins or whatever. So she colored all those. That time was sucked up. It was mandatory. She has to be in class because she's learning how to be a doctor. Then she put 
oh, okay, it's Mother's Day. She has she has to do something with me, so she like colors in one hour. Uh, okay, then she has to go pick up some clothes from the dry cleaner or go put gas in her car or something like that. So she colored in that. So she would do these color coded charts and she realized that she was wasting a lot of time sleeping and showering. So she decided that when she would record, sometimes she wouldn't go to class. One of her friends would go and click in the clicker that she was there. They would record, her friend would record the episode, I mean, the, the professor's uh, lecture on veins or what it was. And then when she was in the shower, she would just listen to the episode. Or she, she would listen to it at double speed because like we can listen a lot faster than people think we can. So I remember one day we were living together and the, the bathroom was upstairs and there were two bedrooms upstairs and the downstairs was the kitchen and the living room. And I remember coming home and I I heard a man's voice and I kept thinking like, was there a man here? Like, like what, what is he doing upstairs? It, it wasn't like a repairman fixing something because they usually let us know when a repairman is going around. I just heard, I heard the shower on and then I just heard this man's voice in the shower, in the shower. I go, are you okay? Oh yeah, yeah, I'm taking a shower. I go, who's the, who's the man in there? Said, I'm just listening to a lecture. Go, okay, so I'll be out in a minute. So then I go to my room and put my teaching stuff down. Then I go back downstairs and like fix a cup of tea. And I'm just sitting on a couch and she comes back downstairs. She goes, hey, what's up? How was your day? Because I was teaching. And I go, man, that was kind of weird. She goes, what? She goes, she goes I don't have time to just listen to the lectures at normal speed. I was just li listening to it at, at double time. And then another thing she would do is like when she's going to sleep, instead of wasting her time obsessing, like, you know, when you go to sleep, you waste about like at least 15 minutes worrying about stuff. Or like when you go to sleep at night, about how much time do you spend trying to get to sleep? Uh, uh, I don't know, eight hours? No. You're in bed. Okay, you're in bed. You're going to go to sleep. Turn the lights off. Maybe you have your phone with you. How long does it take you to get to sleep? 10 minutes, 20 minutes? Can you hit your head hits the pillow? You begin sleeping. You need to draw the blinds. Like about how long does it take you to begin sleeping? Oh, I don't feel comfortable with your questions. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. For example, me, when I go to bed, I just, <laughs> what I'm saying is I'm always, I spend a good amount of time worrying, like, what am I going to do tomorrow? Okay, what happened today? Replaying some conversation, you know, thinking about some people I have to call, something I have to do. So I, I go to sleep worried, and that often produces worried dreams. So I was surprised when my daughter was telling me that, but she started listening to meditation before she would go to sleep. So she would, you know, jump in her bed, put on headphones or whatever, and she would drive away worry, just didn't have time to worry, and she would just listen to, like, a bell, doing, doing, like some oh, kind like of weird that. bell. Oh, yeah, I like that. Um, yeah. You do that meditation stuff. Yeah, what is on? We should do it more often. Yeah, and also we're going to make an episode about silence. People, the, the subscribers are going to click on, and it's just going to be like seven minutes of silence. <laughs> hey, no, I'm joking around, be, but you're right. You're right. Go ahead. Would that be terribly rude to just leave? I mean, if I leave without announcing any goodbye and you're not ringing any bell, but my time is up, would that be terribly rude to just hang up? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, we, right now we're just ringing a bell to to signify the end of an episode. So we've been talking about auras and energy and worry and you know energy vampires. So I, I think we covered you know a, a lot of a lot of topics. And you specifically asked me like how what could be some techniques from for organizing your time. So 
Yeah, you know, the riding a bicycle, you you want to ride a bicycle. So maybe when you get off work, you can ride a bicycle. You know, even though you told me uh, what needs to be done, I I still like what you said because uh, I've never felt that my time being wasted after we uh, spoke. But you know, we don't we don't we 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 always just do the best we can. Like like you know, usually a parent would teach the child things, but um, I have found out that I have learned a lot from both of my children, from my students. Um, there's a poem, I think it's by Wordsworth, my heart leaps up when I behold a rainbow in the sky. And it ends with, the child is the father to the man. I love that line, the child is the father to the man. So the child grows up and then eventually Comes a man and yeah, because there's incongruity in it. Well, it's poetry. Ah, uh, I see. Uh, 